The church and the state have rarely seen eye to eye, but today there's a growing debate over the role and relevance of faith schools, i.e. schools that teach a particular religion, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, or increasingly, the different branches of those religions, let's say Roman Catholics and Protestants. The big issues at the moment are whether the government should keep funding these state schools, whether they're divisive in terms of their admissions policy, and whether they're divisive in terms of employment. The Association of Teachers and Lecturers has launched a campaign against the government to tackle all of these issues. So we've been along to speak to Alison Ryan, who's given us an overview of the campaign. OK, we're here with Alison Ryan of the Association for Teachers and Lecturers. Alison, thanks very much for, uh, for talking to us today. You're welcome. First off, can you explain the campaign on faith schools that the ATL has taken up and the reasons behind it? Well, it started a few years back at an ATL conference. There was a motion um, that had a number of parts to it, but it basically was requiring us, um, in terms of both the membership and the staff, to look a bit further at ATL, uh, sorry, at faith schools, and to see where they, uh, if you like, fit within the broader education scene. And the the basic feeling was we had to make every child matter. Um, and that meant every child of every denomination, of every belief or non-religious belief. Um, so what we decided to do was to put forward um, a policy on faith schools that looked at how they were different from other schools in terms of the state or legislation. So it focused on admissions, it focused on employment and it focused on curriculum. We're not anti and we're not pro, but we do think that we need um, open admissions uh, policies in faith schools or at least they need to be balanced against a the duty to promote community cohesion. We need employment policies which are about the best person for the job regardless of their religious beliefs or lack of and we need a curriculum that is followed the same in all state schools whether they're faith schools or non-faith schools. Now I know where I come from up in the Midlands uh, the faith schools get consistently higher exam results uh, than the, the secular state schools. Uh, is this not a good argument for leaving things as they are at the moment? Well, there's been quite a bit of research around um, just looking at exactly that effect. They have found that those better academic results are more often related to, if you like, a sense of selection in the admissions process. Um, in areas where you have faith schools, they may do slightly better than the counterparts, but that's their counterparts aren't doing any better. In other words, they've got the students who possibly um, have more, um, come from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, more of them might have English as an additional language, might have special educational needs. And of course, if you don't have a good balance in a school, um, it's more difficult to raise attainment levels. Faith schools um, in certain areas may, those particular schools may have higher attainment, but it, it's at the cost of other schools and it's at the cost of higher segregation across the board. And what about the, uh, the obvious counter to that, that faith schools preach values of community, of brotherhood, of shared identity? What would be the ATL's response to this? All community schools will push that. And in fact, they're all under the duty to promote community cohesion. We applaud that. We're not saying that faith schools deliberately do this. But of course, if you had admissions policies that give preference to one group over another, and you have, you're oversubscribed and you have a lot of either Maybe, for example, your Church of England school, you would have a lot of, uh, of the Church of England community in your area, or your Roman Catholic school, and you have a lot of Roman Catholics nearby, then you will have a school that might end up not being particularly mixed in its intake in terms of um, religion, for example. Now, when religion at the moment is becoming quite a divisive thing in our society, we're obviously very concerned about that, the impact of that. And you're not only, of course, making sure that you only have that population within a school, but the neighbouring schools are going to miss out on having exposure to that particular group. And that, that's not good for the community as a whole. So we want to be very clear. We're not saying all faith schools are against community cohesion, not at all. But the practice of having separate admissions will lead to segregation. And research has shown that. Um, so that's why we have challenged the admissions side, so it's around the legislation. Um, obviously, less people in Britain are identifying themselves as religious, but we still have a very powerful church lobby, for instance. Might the ATL stand more of a chance of success with a different campaign in this respect? Well, of course, this is not our only campaign. We run campaigns on many other aspects of education policy. Um, 
But what we are trying to do is move the debate at least away from the very pro, there's very strong pro and there's very strong anti lobbies and they're not moving it forward at all it's, and it's quite destructive in fact because one each is often quite dismissive of the views of the other. What we want to move it is to a, a at the moment relatively neutral space, a central space where people can think okay well we have issues about community cohesion it's important that we bring young children and young people together let's you know grow our understanding of other groups both as adults and as children for our children and young people so if we can do that that's a way forward because we're the education union and that's how we see ourselves so for us it's not really about um, structures a particular way we want to see um, things move forward to make sure that you know everyone in our society gets as good an education as they possibly can well there we have it that's the ATL's campaign outlined it's certainly a noble idea but they've got their work cut out for them now we want you to answer a couple of questions for us is the ATL right to keep launching this campaign? Do they stand any chance of success? And are the faith schools divisive in any way at all? Let us know by logging on to us and leaving your views at www.catch21.co.uk.